My name is Ms. Artastic, and today we're going to make an art piece that explores the element of art space using whatever art mediums that you have in your home. For this tutorial, you're going to need um, any choice of mediums, so something to draw with and something to color with, or if you want to use the exact same mediums that I'm using in this tutorial, I will be using markers, um, pencil crayons, and paint. But as I said, um, you should be using whatever you have in your home to experiment with. So if you're at home, I know that sometimes you don't have a lot of mediums or materials to choose from. So we're just going to go over a few different um, items that you can select bef uh, for the drawing part of this tutorial. So for the drawing, um, you can use, um, my favorite is just a fine liner. I like the Sharpie fine liner. If you don't have that, you can use just a normal permanent marker. If you don't have a normal permanent marker, you can find yourself a black pen that will work. If you don't have a black pen, grab a black pencil crayon. And if you don't have any of these, find a pencil or anything that you can make a mark with. Okay? So we're going to start, and I'm going to use what I, sorry, I'm going to use the um, fine tip marker for some of it, and I'm also going to use this one because it stands out really well on the webcam, so it'll make it easier for you to see. So, we are gonna start off by drawing, um, well, actually we're gonna be thinking about an animal. So we're gonna be making balloon animals that move um, through space, and in the distance they are quite small, and then the closer they are to the viewer, which is us, they are going to be a lot larger. So you want to pick a theme for your landscape. So for my landscape, I'm gonna make it a Canadian theme and I'm gonna create beavers through the space of a landscape. And it's also gonna be more of a Canadian landscape. However, you can pick any sort of balloon animal that you want to create. It could be an animal actually floating in space. Maybe it's a space cat. Maybe you're gonna do a dog, maybe it's a cat, maybe you're gonna have turtles. Whatever you want, I want you to think of an animal that you would like to draw. Or if you don't have an idea, you can do the Canadian beaver. After that, you're also, as you draw, are going to think of what kind of place this creature would live in. Whether it is, it is in Canada, then it's going to be more of a Canadian a uh, landscape with a lot of evergreens and mountains and the rivers or if you're in a desert then you want to think about how the terrain and the foliage and items in that landscape are different okay so no matter what you do it's all going to start off with the basics of similar shapes and how we create the illusion that the object is either closer or farther in space and this is of course all working with the element of art space so our focus for this is creating space in our artwork so we're going to start off with the foreground if we think about a landscape we have a foreground a middle ground and a background okay we're going to start off in the foreground and i'm going to start by drawing my beaver's face and then i'm going to draw its balloon body around it if you're doing pencil, you can start off by drawing the circle for the body and then fill in the details. But because I only have one shot at this, I'm going to start off with the face and add the body around. So I'm going to draw my beaver's eyes. So two circles. I'm going to add pupils. I'm going to give him a nose. some big cheeks and some beaver teeth and beavers have very small ears so that's what he will get for that all right so now it's going to get a little bit silly I have given him a little bit of fur texture on his head 
And now we gotta do the balloon body. So I'm gonna first add one paw on one side, and then I'm gonna draw a massive circle around the beaver because this beaver is a balloon animal. And of course, I need to add a little back paw and the iconic tail. Perfect. We are going to repeat this character a number of times through the art piece. So think, remember what you did, and then you're going to repeat it through the artwork, which is also a principle of design, which is repetition. Repetition is repeated shapes, and this will be repeated through your artwork. So we're pulling in lots of different things into our artwork. So element of art space, principle of design, repetition. I want to continue working on the foreground, so all the different elements of my landscape that are going to be closest to me. So I'm going to make this beaver sitting kind of in a, or floating, <laughs> he's a balloon, so he's going to be floating on a pond instead of sitting in a pond. And we have a lot of wild cattails around here, so we'll add some cattails. And we'll worry about coloring everything in a little bit later. Maybe there will be a just a log hanging out over here. Oftentimes in a windstorm, trees blow over and then they decompose and there's often lots of logs hanging out. Or maybe He's using it for his dam. Awesome. I'm also going to add an evergreen tree over here. That way we can know which is the foreground and understand the scale of this artwork. All right, so now we're gonna draw a few more of our balloon creatures. We want to have five balloon creatures in total. So as you draw them, you're gonna get, draw the next one a little bit smaller than your first beaver. Then the next one after that is gonna be even more small. And then continually shrinking the beavers as, or whatever balloon creature animal you're drawing, as they move through space, and get farther in the distance until the very last one you can barely see it all, which is why I have this other marker here because this will make too big of a mark eventually. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw four more beavers all getting smaller as they are in the distance because in my world I'm creating, there is a pack of beavers bobbing around as they are all balloon creatures.
awesome. So I have all of my beavers drawn. So as they move farther into the distance, they get smaller and smaller. And that will create the illusion of depth, which is part of the element of art space. So the space within the artwork. And also it's repetition. The principle of design repetition, we have a repeated shape moving through our artwork to help guide the viewer through our art piece. All right, so now we're gonna work on details in the middle ground. So first I'm gonna draw my horizon line and I'm gonna switch back to my Sharpie here, or well, they're both Sharpie, but my thicker one. And I'm just gonna draw a horizon line across my page. And this is the horizon line, there we go. Next, I'm going to draw some hills here and there. There are a lot of hills and mountains where I am in Canada, as I am on the west coast. It looks awfully, an awful lot like Washington State. And behind there, I'm drawing mountains because that is the landscape that I am creating. But your landscape might look different. So you can think about where your balloon creatures are existing and what kind of landscape they would be in. Maybe they're sand dunes, whatever it is. Think about those details. I'm gonna draw a sun. As well, I'm going to draw the clouds. Great. I'm also going to add some trees that might be in the distance on top of the hills. Again, we're thinking about space and anything that is far away is going to be a lot smaller than, I say something that's nice and close. I'm also adding a little stream here so it starts off nice and thin and as it comes closer it gets thicker which this is now kind of also creating a bit of a one point perspective look here we have it all kind of coming out towards us and of course we need some foliage And I'm just adding lots of grass texture everywhere. Right now you can have fun and experiment and design your landscape the way you want. And when you're done, you're gonna find something to color with. So uh, you should use whatever you have at home. I'm going to use pencil crayons today, but if you don't have pencil crayons, you should use wax crayons. And if you don't have wax crayons, you can use felt markers. And if you don't have felt markers, just use your paints to paint everything in. But if you don't have paint, you can just color everything in with pencil crayon or wax crayon or felt markers, whatever you have at home. Today, you're gonna watch me use pencil crayons and paint. But if you don't have it, you can watch me do my version and as I'm working you can color with whatever you would like to color with.
first thing I would like you to do before you get started is find a black and we're going to add shadows on the ground and they're not touching the beavers because these beavers are floating. Yes, these are all floating, levitating beavers. And I'm just trying to shake carefully so it's dark in the center and then fades out to a smoother shadow. So all of these guys are floating, balloon, bobbing beavers. Super random. I'm going to use my pencil crowns and I'm going to color in a lot of my finer details first and then I'm going to paint over with the rest of it. As you shade your creatures, or color your creatures, try and do it in a way that you can make them look round. So we want to have the edges darker. And as you work in, we want to lighten the value. So you want a dark value along the edge. Yep, that is another element of art. Value is an element. So along the edge, and as we 
pull in, we want to soften it. So if you're using pencil crayons or crayons, this is a little bit easier. For felt markers, you're not going to have as much control. And then as I get towards the center, I'm going to really barely, barely color. So very, 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 very light. So we have a smooth transition from dark to light or value in my balloon creature. I'm going to blend a couple colors for some things because I want the beaver to have variation in color. So I'm going to do the tails with a gold first and then I'll color over to blend the brown and gold together to make a lighter brown for my tail. I just realized that my <laughs> creek completely disappeared in behind that tree. There we go.
I'm going to use a white. You can use pencil crayon, oil pastel, or wax crayon. And if you have clouds, you're going to, and if you do intend on painting, you're going to want to color them white to help create a bit of a resist barrier between the paint and your clouds. So this is only necessary if you are painting that and if you have put clouds in. If you don't have either of these things or do not intend to paint, then you do not need to worry. Oh. Missed. Missed this log.
have salt at home and you are painting, you can simply sprinkle some salt on some of the wet areas and watch it dry for some interesting textures. paint um, let it dry and once it's done drying you can see the effects of your art piece and the result of your hard work well artastic nation that's the end of this episode tune in on Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or 8 p.m. Eastern for the premiere of the next episode please subscribe to this channel for more fantastic art tutorials for more art tutorials, visit my blog at MsArtastic.com. Creative, high-quality art resources for teachers can be found at my TPT store, Ms. Artastic. And shirts for both teachers and art teachers are available at MsArtasticCollection.com. All links are available in the description of this video. See you next time.